This is the new BMW 3 Series S 330e. So, on the one hand, an electric boost for more performance. On the other hand, clean driving, at least locally emission-free and possible lower fuel consumption. Hmm, what about that? We will test that one here today. An exterior, interior and the driving experience electrified. And of course, if you generally want to know more about the new 3 Series, that's also in this review. Need full HD, full screen and full length. On Autogefühl, let's go! This new generation, G20, is the internal code for the sedan, which we have here today. See here the bigger front grille, then adaptive air intake, so the double kidney will only open on demand. Then you have different lines also available, where you can pick the color, for example, of the frame. This one here is a very interesting matte gray color. It's called dark frozen gray. Headlamps come standard as LED. Optional adaptive LED and optional optional also with the laser function. Then you also have those blue accentuations like we have in here. Yeah, I mean you have more high beam than or even stronger, but of course it's a you know really cost worthy option. Then in lower end you can see here quite strong lower bumper again fits very well also to the color and overall a very sporty front also with those accentuations on the hood. And the thing is here with the plug-in hybrid version. It does look the very same as all other versions. You can pick any trim for that one. That's also the new strategy. So the plug-in hybrid version does not look differently. 4 meters 70, 15 foot 4 or 185 inches is the length of the new 3 series. 8.5 centimeters longer and also in the front and the rear it's a little bit wider. So bigger stands on the road. Not too much different though. 16 to 19 inch wheels are available. Those ones here are 18 inch and you can see it here at the bed here. This one is the M Sport model, so the sportiest trim visually. And then, of course, you can go for, for example, the M Performance model. We also shown you a 340i preview on the racetrack. Tune into that review too. This one here, then, okay, today about the plug-in hybrid, but you can see from the exterior, it's really about which trim you choose. Here again with the sporty one, also with a shadow package. That means black caps here for the mirrors and also black window frames. This one here, the classic sedan shape. The plug-in hybrid will also be available for the two-ring one later. And then this classic design element, the Hofmeister Kink or Knick as we say in Germany, derived from older BMW coupés. Very beautifully done. We'll also see something of that on the interior. And right here at the right side, there is the fuel cap. You have to release it from the inside, by the way, the outer cap. And the opposite side, opposite side will be reserved then for the PHEV. And here the opposite side, under the M logo, there's this electric charger. Only 3.5 kilowatt AC charging. Well, but still in two and a half hours, this 12 kilowatt hour battery is full. Or if you use the household plug, then just let it put in on an eye overnight. In the rear, you can see the new design element are those horizontally drawn tail lamps. And that also stretches the width. 2 centimeters wider the track in this new generation. In the front it was 4 centimeters wider even. And 25% stiffer is the whole chassis, so that guarantees a little bit more sportiness. And we have already experienced that on the race track. That was quite well done. Then the voluminous rear here for the M Sport model. And those are real exhaust pipes indeed. Yeah, we hardly find those nowadays. And let me already tell you something about the suspensions. There is a new hydraulic cushion damper available. Well, it's standard now for the 3 Series. Optional, you can get an M Sport suspension that is stiff. We tested that one already in the 330i. That was actually quite rough from the ride. And then optional, optional, the adaptive dampers, which are probably way to go. So either stick with the base or the adaptive dampers if you want more comfort. We test the adaptive dampers here today. So, what about engines for the 3 Series? There's a 2-liter 4-cylinder petrol with either with 184 or 258 horsepower. Then there's the M340i 3-liter 6-cylinder, 374 horsepower. 
diesel side, a 2 liter 4 cylinder diesel is 150 or 190, 3 liter 6 cylinder diesel 265, and then the stronger versions, optional X drive, orbit drive, or the strongest, always with X drive, orbit drive, and this one here today. The plug-in hybrid version, which is somehow based on the 320i, so to say, horsepower-wise from a petrol, 184 petrol horsepower, but an overall system output, 252, or a peak horsepower output of 292, about 10 seconds this boost lasts. Very interesting. So, 2-liter four-cylinder petrol engine plus the electric drive from this 12 kilowatt hour battery, and the pure electric range, supposed to be 60 kilometers officially, but you know the real realistic figure is usually then a little bit lower. We calculate about 50 kilometers, a um, little bit less probably. We'll also test it out again later. And interesting is that pure electric, you can even drive 140 kilometers on the motorway, for example. And in the hybrid mode, you can drive 110 kilometers pure electric in the mode. Yeah, I mean, the difference is in the hybrid mode, it switches, you know, a little bit between the petrol and the electric drive. In the pure electric, you say you just want to drive pure electric. So, yeah, we'll see how that one plays out. It, of course, makes sense if you recharge frequently or maybe if you commute electrically during the week and then on the weekend or so, you, you know, just use the petrol engine for a longer term. And there are new subsidiaries, for example, in Germany, you pay less taxes for a company car that you also use privately. So that could also boost those sales. And price-wise, it's also, you know, well, it's more, more expensive than the normal petrol engine, which would be comparable horsepower output and a little bit more expensive than the diesel. But actually, after, you know, some subventions from the government and so on, it can be cheaper than the diesel. This is the car key with the M Sport version. You also have the M colors at the side. And then key is entry and you put your finger right there on those three stripes that it closes or put your head on the inside and then it opens again right there. Oh, by the way, door closing sound. Hmm, we've heard better one, but also worse one. So I think quite okay. Then inside of the doors. This one here with a special animal skin pack, which is of course not making sense for a PHEV, a sustainable car or a more sustainable car. Yeah, I think they have to learn about specking the cars then for those events. Then here the Hofmeister kink as design element of the inside of the doors. Then the galvanized window buttons, very well done. Door pockets will also fit for a little bit bigger bottles. That what I meant you have to release the fuel cap from the inside. Then with the M Sport, you also have an M entry badge right there. And then this new interior of the 3 Series. This one here is the M steering wheel. So it's a different layout with a sportier layout. Also with a heated function is available. Soon more deals to those instruments. They are all digital here, but start with analog as base. Seats are different ones, different forms are available. And, oh, this one is still open. And it starts also with a fabric seat in Europe and in the US. You can also get a Sensatec leatherette for a more animal friendly version. Here again, the full animal skin spec. BMW, by the way, says that they have calculated the CO2 out with the total one of this vehicle if you compare it to a normal combustion engine. And they said that the break even point, we know where the more energy input for the production you know, is evened out by more sustainability, fuel savings, and so on from the PHEV is actually quite early and that this one here is over the whole life cycle of a car about 20% better still and if you use renewable energies even 60% better. Yeah, but then again it would only work if you also put non-animal seats in this car. So seating position itself, the seat form is actually quite comfortable, mid-sized vehicle and one which is 86 or 6 foot 1 still leaves plenty of headroom. There's also a panoramic roof available actually not inbuilt this car. Many control of the steering wheel. And this one here. I'm not sure. Um, we've experienced it in a better way also with BMW. This has some resistance when going up and down. Um, yeah, not sure how often you do that, but 
The good thing is that it goes quite wide and also high, so you can really find a good seating position. So, a little bit more comfortable than the predecessor also, I think. And in the front part here, you can also make the seat a little bit longer. Here the electric setup, where you can also put the front here, right there, back part, and also a lumbar support. And this is, you know, all the same for the most 3 Series version. will also be just the same for the Touring here in the very front. The A-pillar is also not that thick, so you can see very well also to the outside. Interior overview, well, first of all about the sound system. 6, 10, or optional, 16 speakers here with the Harman Kannon sound system. And that one here is pretty decent. Great surround sound, so if you like music, wow. Nice, very, very nice sound. Well, and welcome then here in general to the cockpit overview. This is the top screen setup. I'll soon go into the details of both screens here, virtual instrument, also this one, very well integrated, doesn't stand out too far. Also a clean setup right here. The temperature unit is right here, still accessible, so you can control your AC here. Also, you can use the voice control, for example. Set temperature to 22 degrees. Please first set vehicle ready to drive. Oh, so I need to set vehicle to drive, ready to drive. So. Hey BMW. Hey BMW. Please set temperature to 22 degrees. No problem. I set the temperature in the driver's area on 22 degrees Celsius. And yes, there are speakers. That's why I put the microphone <laughs> to the top right there. You already see the Apple CarPlay integration right there. So some hotkeys in the lower part, metal knurling around the knob here, the volume knob in the lower end. Most is done via touch here, but you still have this drive controller to even zoom through the uh, Apple CarPlay, for example, or best use is, of course, when you are in a map, they can zoom in and out with that and not do the pinch and zoom while driving, for example. I'm steering here we're with a special formula thicker in the upper part. Right side, instead of saying... Hey BMW, I just said it no, not too loud that the car reacts for that. So instead of saying the command for the voice starting, you can also press this button, might be easier. Then you can also um, here, for example, scroll through um, your, your titles or the music. I see it in the head-up display also. Left side for the adaptive cruise control and also for the assistance systems. And there are those nice shifting pedals where you can also then shift yourself, even if you have those automatic gearboxes. There are hardly any engines left with manual gearbox here. Base would be 5.7 inch, small screen in the middle and analog right and left. This one here, 12.3 inch full digital instruments. And when we light it up, you can see that the RPMs go counterclockwise. In this case, it's the E-Boost, so it's not the real engine RPMs. Um, then you can see how much E-Boost you get and also the recharge for the recuperation here for the 330E right there and the left side the normal speed. In the middle part then you can have some space for the GPS. That's also the counterclockwise reason. So you have to get used to it and then it's actually quite fine. You can see 100% charge, 47 kilometers pure electric range is the prediction at the moment. And on the left side also fuel, full fuel and 573 537, sorry, <laughs> kilometers is all the pure fuel range. You cannot configure that much here in this display, but I think it's all fine. It's a good um, view, good visualization, good resolution. So I'm really happy with those. Head-up display is quite useful. And here, as I said earlier, you can scroll through the music titles. Or if you have the GPS running, then you can also have GPS information on there next to, of course, the speed and the allowed speed. Here, pretty cool. I really like this feature because, for example, when you open the doors, ah, there are all those BMW wings. I miss them really at the light signature on the exterior, but here on the interior, this BMW style is still present. And now we put the car on the inside to show you something of the ambient light. You can also pick different colors right there. Also split colors, for example, depending on the area. And oh yeah, my favorite is of course the blue one and it fits also the rest of the interior as contrast. But there are also some more colors available, for example, even a green. Hmm, yeah, or purple right there. Oh, purple looks always quite fancy, doesn't it? So now this infotainment screen, 8.8 .8 inch is the standard. This one optional 10.25 inch with the newest layout. This one here is the GPS 
good reaction and I like the GPS of BMW at the moment best because it has the best you know direction routing somehow never failed to you know hit anything you can use a touchscreen but you also can use the lower um, pad to browse inside those um, you know those menus here that's pretty interesting you can also have a sport display here for the 330e and um, via apps you can also connect your phone to Apple CarPlay wirelessly Android Auto however is not available so that one here at the moment would be then connected with Apple CarPlay but again um, Android Auto not available and yeah they plan it to to have it for the future but at the moment yeah um, no plans for that so then in the top menu you can use it and also access the Apple CarPlay when it's available and going back here because there's more to show you about the different driving modes here for the battery control you can for example maintain the status of the of the battery but that's not really efficient so to say um, you can have different hybrid um, driving modes or the all-electric driving mode we'll talk more about it when we drive the car there's also here for example plant charging for example and you can also have a preconditioning for in front of your departure so when you have this plug-in hybrid vehicle you already have an independent heating or cooling with your car where you usually pay extra for so that is definitely one of the advantages too hey thomas you told me it has wireless apple carplay but it doesn't work in my new bmw so then go to your mobile devices switch to your phone and then here the connection mode is suddenly on bmw idrive and then you have to go to apple carplay and you also have to activate the apple carplay first so both you have to do you have to do this one here switch to apple carplay and in communications under mobile devices here under settings that's the second one you have to activate apple carplay and if those two things are activated then it does work and then you also have the hotkey here in the lower part and that's the integration which looks quite fancy for this widescreen view but for the first time i search for those two um you know clicks to set like for an hour or so now i finally know how to do it and then it works pretty well so what about this one here there's a cover with no piano lacquer that's good then you can slide it open and there's the inductive charging platform for your phone blue indicates that it's working normal usb plug here usb-c will be in the rear then adaptive cup holders in the front here 12 volt power supply and then there's the automatic shift lever. there's a converter gearbox and just rear wheel drive here also for the pf because the power is combined first and then sent to the rear so there's normal converter automatic gearbox then on the left side you can also here have the battery control status button uh, they have the um, the camera button for example start stop then the different modes here for example driving all electric and then on the right side you still have the combination you can either you know you can write in here for an address or so but you can also turn and press still with a nice clicking sound and have still have the hotkeys for the map and so on so it's a good combination use this one while driving and the touchscreen while stationary so the middle armrest here well attached and then underneath here you have usb-c so they mix normal usb and usb-c in the front already and some more space for example sunglasses and so on so getting in the rear this is very interesting you see here how this glass is cut out right here oh then here they actually protected it with a rubber lip they did not do that for the one series very interesting so that's good because it can be sharp then here this again this cut out for the Hofmeister King design element then this typical BMW back bench design which is has this round shape and still reminds us of like 20 30 years old BMW I think it's quite cool that they stick to their styling right there but what about the legroom so you know the new 3 series is longer in this new generation and that also increases the legroom so actually no problem then for me to sit here the seat should be a little bit higher that you can put my seat under the seat a little bit better headroom wise here also in the sedan is actually no problem with my size so still some headroom left the touring of course continues as for the roof line so you have even more headroom but this one here works just fine and yeah i mean um there are segments which offer more legroom but here inside this very premium mid-size segment this is also you know so probably the same as with the audi a4 um so it's quite average result but also not too bad you cannot move the bench and you can have the isofix at the outside each but you cannot flip the bench from here the only thing you can do is 
First of all, have to have those cup holes here in the middle with the armrest. And then you can use this one here as a ski hatch to load things through. But for flipping everything, we have to go to the trunk. Well, you can sit here on the middle seat, but yeah, it works, but it's not that comfortable. It's also a little bit stiffer as for the surface. Then there is this middle tunnel because it's a real driven car. So no matter if you have overdrive or not, there's always the middle tunnel right here. Pretty thick. Kind of put your feet right there. But then there's two USB-C devices here in the rear next to a 12 volt power supply. And you can also get a rear AC unit if you like. So what about the trunk? Yeah, this is somewhat limited. 480 liters with a normal 3 Series sedan, 375 liters with this one because it's not as high as the other one. But you then have an even loading seal here. That's the somewhat advantage. But you can see you're somewhat limited right here because they have actually put the normal fuel tank underneath here which is usually lower, and lower here then is the battery. So again, normal 3 Series, the fuel tank is right underneath here, but lower. And here, first your fuel tank, and then even lower, the battery. Very interesting. So what about the measurements right here? As for the width, it's uh, even a little bit less than a meter. That's a little bit disappointing right here. That's better in the Touring, for example. And then in length, it's also just about a meter. And the height right here, let's see, that is about 40 centimeters. But there is one trick. By the way, this one here is a bag for charging cable, which is also fixed right there, with, you know, with a, with a belt. And then here, this one, you can actually, there's a mechanism, and put it down, and then you can actually put some higher stuff in here. Let's see, for example, a backpack that then also fits upright in here. So that's the possibility you have. So somewhat limited, yeah, but I don't know. I mean, for lower suitcase, that's still okay somewhat. And then you can also put that up again. Welcome to Thomas's driving lounge here with the BMW 3 Series and the 330e. And the cool thing is, of course, with the hybrid and in the all electric mode, I can drive totally silently and I can even drive it faster, all electric. And that's not too often with the hybrid models, so that it really goes to 140 kilometers pure electric. That's pretty cool. So at the moment, driving pure electric and 100 kilometers and yeah, I mean, from the outside, at about, you know, 30, 40 kilometers, electric cars are not more silent than the other ones because it's about south of the tires. But from the inside, definitely when you don't have the engine noise, electric vehicles are also more silent at higher speeds, so to say. At some point, of course, you can say, yeah, maybe you hear the wind noise more if the engine sound doesn't, like, overlay or something. Yeah, you can argue, you know, <laughs> for both of that, surely. So when you go off the throttle, you see the charge meter then in this digital instrument. And of course, when you're out on the brakes, it recuperates even more. Just when the real brakes are being needed, when you really hammer the brakes, then, you know, the real brakes are also being applied. Does it make sense to drive all electric first? It depends if you have a commuting way and want to use all of this electric energy first and you know you don't have too much to ride. Yeah, probably then. Other than that, it can also make sense to go in the hybrid mode. So then the car decides itself. For example, when you are then at you know lower speeds or you hardly do anything with the throttle, it stays in this electric mode. And when you hammer the throttle a little bit more, the combustion engine goes on. It also works, by the way, in the pure electric mode. There's like a resistance in the throttle, and when you floor it out, then you also have the combustion engine drive for like emergency situations where you say, oh, I need to, re need to accelerate now very fastly. That, you know, might make sense then, then you want to have the combustion engine power also when flooring it out. It's very interesting that this one here needs 5.9 seconds to 100 kilometers or 62 miles an hour. That's indeed pretty decent as for the acceleration. So it comes close to 5.8 seconds from the 330i. So this one here has an acceleration. Oh, yeah. So that's <laughs> one of the past 3 Series. Still so beautiful to look at. Look how the, you know, the, the tail lamps were so differently designed. Yeah, this is a big step then here from this to this new generation and also the PHEV version, which is, of course, something 
very different than you know the, the old petrol ones. So and well, the, the first drive here with the e-drive is actually pretty cool. So you always have a nice electric boost, and then maybe you've heard. I'm not sure if you can you can hardly pick that up sound-wise because the combustion engine is also very well insulated from the cabin, so you can hardly hear that this one then also sets in. And when we are now here in the countryside, we can also set the distance control. There's also a new visualization there on, on the inside. And the distance to the car in front of us is being kept. Yeah, still very beautiful to look at. And there are different modes for that. There's also the assisted driving and the distance control, so you can switch from that. Assisted driving, the highest trim of that, that also the steering wheel is being controlled, so to say. You have to keep your hands on the steering wheel so it's not level 3 autonomous driving. But still, you know, the car keeps it in lane. See it here? Uh, yeah, that worked pretty well. So, <laughs> yeah, Michelle says like, nice. <laughs> That's what Brian would say. You know? Nice. I always love when Brian says that. So, well, I mean, but again, that's... Please don't don't do that at home. Just showing here for the you know, for the just for the showcase purposes, but it shows that the system works very well, and then you can relax a little bit more. So, noise insulation is really good with the only generation of the three series. So, pretty silent in here. Good ride, and well, sometimes you maybe just want to go for distance control because you want to steer everything on your own, and this car feels very agile. This stiffness of this new generation. The plus in weight here from the plug-in hybrid version doesn't play a major role when driving this car, so you don't really oh Mercedes Opto old timer. So um, you know I, I don't really care about the extra in weight as for the driving. You don't really feel it, at least not in normal road driving. Yeah, maybe you would do so uh, at the racetrack or something, but not really here. So it literally drives pretty much normal, like a normal uh, three series. It's just that you are definitely more silent, have a more relaxing, silent experience because when you just let the car roll, again the combustion engine shuts off and then you know you can relax a little bit more. That's that's pretty cool definitely. So I want to take a look at that also. So when we have the driving information, the energy flow and then we can of course you shouldn't do that you know like you know concentrate on that all the way while driving um, but here it says at the moment e-power electric drive and Again, as long as you keep it rather steady, you're always in that mode, and that's also pretty efficient because the battery is not stressed. If you then think about like full speed on the motorway, that wouldn't make so much sense using it just on the pure electric drive than here. So it always depends on the situation, definitely. So here, when I, for example, go out of the small village and want to accelerate on the countryside road again here, accelerate, and then, yeah, after a while, the combustion engine sets in, but the transition is really nicely done. Then there's also this orange symbol for the combustion engine. Yeah, really it's one of the, you know, one of the PFC where the transition between both is really nicely done. Typical situation here also where with the combustion engine this energy would have been lost from the acceleration. Now there was someone turning in on the left. And we could gain back some energy from that. So that's also an interesting experience as for that. Well, what about the effective consumption? That's of course a good question. Um, it always depends on how much and how often you recharge. But then does it also make sense when the battery is depleted? That also depends on the topography, the profile. When you for example go downhill you can use more re um, recuperating then again. And you can take them some you know average values, driving information for example. Um, yeah, I mean, here now I was driving mainly electric, and there's one liter of fuel consumption. That's of course really low, but I've depleted more of the battery. So, yeah, that always depends. What is quite cool, this one has an X works value, so that really shows, like, from when the car was built, all the 3,000 kilometers it has been running, shows about 7.5 liters on one kilometer for the fuel, for example. Mm -hmm. And, um, not sure why it's there now, but I sh uh, I've seen earlier that um, for the pure electric it was about 23 kilowatt hours, something like that, on one kilometers, and that's also quite, quite typical, so to say. Um, 
So yeah, it's really hard to take the definite um, fuel consumption figures, but you will of course save fuel when the electricity is um, you know, cheaper in your country, that might help for example. Um, and again, this recuperation effect is quite effective. And the thing I really like most about those PHEV vehicles is the calmness in the drive. And you feel a little more, let's say, evolved. The ride is more sophisticated. On the one hand, you have really good power when accelerating it out. On the other hand, you have this calmness inside the city. And it's not so annoying when reducing the speed here again. For example, now there's the next village beginning. You reduce the speed again can regain some of the energy so that somehow you know, definitely a, a, a cool driving feeling so to say as well I, I really like it um, have you any experience with the PHEVs or with the electric vehicles you can of course come to a conclusion yeah why don't they make it all electric yes that will come after a while too so we, we, we do expect it also from BMW so we can turn right now here Get a good handling here from the whole car. It's a lot of fun to drive. And I, th I think really the main characteristic about the car is the smooth transition between the electric drive and the combustion engine, which is definitely among the smoothest transitions I've so far experienced here for a PF vehicle. Here again in the slalom, it's a lot of fun. One criticism point from our initial 3 Series review was that the steering wheel feels a little bit numb in the normal degree areas. And did they fix that? That's a tough question. And my first impression is that it's a little bit better now. So, I mean, those were pretty early vehicles. Maybe they did something there, but here now, I think I have a little bit better feeling here. Yeah, I mean, the steering does not feel the most natural but it is somewhat direct and indeed it's definitely better than with the first ride where I didn't have so much feeling in the low degree angle but here yeah there's reaction now so maybe you know some of the BMW engineers listened to our review and then they um, also fine-tuned that so definitely well done better now um, it's good that we also keep you updated with those changes then when you know the that the cars also evolve after a while. It's quite often that when the very, very first vehicles from the works, from the new generation, maybe you know some little stuff here and there that need to be tweaked first. Um, so sometimes as a customer, it can also be making sense to wait a little bit until those stuff, you know, until this stuff is really resolved. We can just a lot of fun in every roundabout with this car, rear wheel drive only. And indeed, they gather the power from the electric drive and the combustion engine and then send it to the wheels. So it's not a system where it's you know, all wheel drive on another axle or it's maybe separated. So it's really combined then. That's pretty interesting, isn't it? What about acceleration? Interesting is the traction to the you know, sport ESC, then the manual shifting lever to the left, then also sports mode clicking twice to the extra boost then we have the power of combustion and then plus electric drive and we can use even the launch control and that's 100 wow pretty interesting hmm. so of course we more heard the combustion engine here now but there was still the electric drive boost, especially like, you know, in the, in the first second. So, again, when you flow it all out, the less you hear or feel the electric boost, but especially when you're you know, more in normal driving situations and so on, then you actually feel a little bit more of the electric boost. So definitely very interesting. And this definitely shows this is somewhat yeah, already something that goes towards, uh, uh, you know, being a performance car. Um, yeah, it can really do both, you know, being good in performance and also in this, you know, silent electric drive. That's what I find so interesting. And um, the thing is then, most of the time you really enjoy more of those, you know, 
electric drive situations here indeed. You can also stay in this extra boost mode, but um, you know it will only be available for about 10 seconds. This peak horsepower of 292 horsepower then, that's of course pretty impressive. Um, but I think you know the the better thing about this car is then when you notice this commuting and you know there's also quite some traffic that you have more relaxation when being in a car. But definitely is able to do both and I think that's also you know something of a unique selling point of, of this car. We can do one more you know out out, um, out of the uh, corner here in the traffic light during stream and here and yeah nice. That's really cool with the rear wheel drive. So you just get around the corners a little bit better. You know, that's definitely an advantage if you compare it, for example, to an, uh, like an um, you know, Audi A4, for example. Well, you know, when you they have the bigger engines with the quattro overdrive drive with 40, 60 percent all-wheel drive distribution, then you still have somewhat rear wheel -wheel bias. But here, of course, there's 100 <laughs> percent rear wheel bias with this car here, and that's pretty cool. Nice sound actually also from the engine, so it doesn't sound like thin four-cylinder-ish. It sounds quite sonorous already, doesn't it? Well, what's your take on that? Here in the um, sport mode, by the way, the steering reaction is a little bit stiffer. Ah, but that's now interesting. So, there it's stiffer, but then that's also again what I meant earlier. So in the sports mode, here those low degree areas are loose or looser then, and then it gets stiffer on the outside, so it's interesting. What I criticize with the steering input, you feel more with the sports mode than you would do with the normal so, or Porsche as well, than you would do with the normal mode. That's interesting. So obviously they worked a little bit to the normal mode setting, but it's really um, strange a little bit that um, the 3 Series is the one BMW where I'm less satisfied with the BMW steering setting was better, for example, in the 1 Series, is better in the big SUVs and so on. But still, you know, it's talking about an icon, you know, high level still, you know. So it's it's good, definitely, but just we try to take a look at the details. But definitely I have to say that um, it feels better, it feels more balanced in the normal driving mode, but somewhat still artificial if you compare it to other BMW steering settings. So now again, I can set the cruise control, having a lot of fun with this vehicle here today and enjoy really this, you know, literally <laughs> hybrid drive. But definitely, you know, it more makes you appreciate the electric situations, definitely. So interesting, by the way, when I'm here you know, in the hybrid mode and the combustion engine is on, I also see the RPM meters here on the right side. Of course, fuel consumption also went up now due to this acceleration stuff. And if I really want to drive all electrified, I can either wait that the car does that at some point, or then press again the electric button. With um, recharging the car while driving, that's not really efficient. It might make sense when there will be those situations for, you know, E-zones, that some cities maybe say we only let electric cars in. That's not at the moment, but there might be some of those zones in the future, and then the p halves are already ready for that. Then you would recharge, you know, when you drive overland, and then you use the electric drive when you are inside the city again. Again, efficiency-wise, that really doesn't make any sense. Yeah, but, you know, sometimes... Um, sometimes um, not every rule really makes sense. And again, locally, you can cut down the emissions. So there's a lot to talk about, definitely. But I think, again, um, it's a very interesting drive here today. So who would buy this car? Tech, you know, when you want to know more about technology, you, you like new technologies, definitely. Uh, you want it a little bit more sustainable over the whole life cycle then, when you save some more fuel over time. And especially making sense when you can recharge at home or at work regularly that you can use as much of the e-drive as possible. And now to the conclusion for today with the new BMW 3 Series S 330e, the new plug-in hybrid. Well, exterior-wise, it's the very same as a normal 3 Series sedan, so they didn't do any changes there. Here today is the M Sport with a 
very sporty touch and indeed it also gives you a sporty boost especially in this extra boost and then you also have a quite sporty car indeed but even more to enjoy is definitely this electric drive so we can use it quite often and also the increased range now if you compare it to the predecessor model that works pretty well and even if you're just in a pure electric mode you have a very good boost very good drive just off the battery and that's a lot of fun and of course pretty cool to be even more relaxed in the city surrounding to be locally emission free and so on and you can also use it even if you cannot recharge every day it will you know be useful somewhere from the recuperation for example it of course makes most sense when you have some charging possibility to make it you know most of the time pure electric so it was a very interesting drive mm, if you know really keen on technology and so on you will definitely enjoy it in tier rise they really have stepped up the game as for the build quality so yeah among leading in the segment now together with the audi and so very well to control also about the infotainment system yeah to set up the wireless carplay once is a little bit complicated but then after that it's pretty easy solution definitely and they were among the first to introduce that the other ones are keeping now up with introducing that but still no android auto here for the bmws also reasonable space inside of course there's the limitation here with the p half with the trunk that's not as high but you can somehow live with that for example when you when you put that stage down again for backpacks or when you don't have too high things to load in. And for the touring, it will be less of the problem when the touring will come as a PHEV, then you, of course, you have more height in the trunk anyway. One more important remark to the driving, because it didn't do it in the driving part this time. This one here had the adaptive suspension, and it was superb. So it was a little bit stiffer than in the sports mode, for example, but still in all different modes, it was sporty enough that you don't have, you know, too much roll but it has really superb comfort. So if you have the extra money to spend about that, the adaptive suspension is, you know, an uh, option worthwhile. Yeah, but then about options and price, hmm, yeah, that can be a problem. In Germany, for example, the price is about 50K here for the PHEV. Already comes, of course, with some stuff included, but then you can easily pop it up over 70K. Yeah, and then over 70K for a mid-sized vehicle, that is, of course, somewhat critical. At least for the PHEV, if you get some, you know, um, subventions, then, you know, for example, 3,000 euros less in Germany. And then even more interesting when you have some special taxation stuff, depending on your country, on your market, then this one here can be very interesting and maybe even cheaper than again on the monthly cost and also the long-term running cost than some of the other models. So what's your take on the new 3 Series in general and also here on the special PHEV version? I hope you enjoyed this insight here today with us. And please also join us next time and to other BMW 3 Series episodes. We will link them in the video description and in the comments. Please tune into those. Thank you so much.